Hello, it's been quite a while. We've had a bit of a summer, summer break from YouTube and there's cool new stuff to look at and explain and explore. One of those things is on the brand new specialized stump jumper, which Will and Steve rode actually at Specialized Head Office. We've got a video of that if you wanna check it out. But the bit I'm interested in is this. This is the new Fox Genie Shock. I thought what we'd do is take it off the bike, strip it down and see what's going on uh, inside. So let's get it off and have a look. So, shocks off, looks pretty standard Fox shock affair, but it has got this bigger can on, um, which is uh, a bit like the sort of dual air can shocks that Fox had years ago, but there is a slight difference. This is more like a DRCV shock. So if you remember the Trek dual rate control valve shocks. They had a little pin inside that opened up a secondary chamber in the shock to make the shock more linear. This, from what I can see, does the exact opposite. So it actually closes a valve rather than an opening one to make it more progressive. But let's get the air can off and have a look what's, what's going on in there. It's quite tricky to take a shock off of one bike and put it on another because the whole, air spring architecture, volume, the damper tune, the way that the shims work are specific for that leverage of that frame. So rear shocks is a hell of a lot more complicated than forks, just purely because forks are one-to-one -one ratio um, and don't have leverage applied. But that is basically exactly why Specialized have done this. Um, so let's get the air out of it um, and pop the air can off and see what we're dealing with. So the air's out and I assume I can treat it like a normal air can and just unscrew it. I probably should look at the instructions, but that'd be really boring, wouldn't it? I can just unscrew it, look at that. I think. I mean, either way, Ben's in the firing line. <laughs> um, so, so far, all standard stuff. Okay, that's air can off. All looks pretty, pretty normal to me, but we'll pull that apart and just, just have a look. So instantly we've got something that looks very non-standard. So there's this huge glide ring section here, which I assume I can take off yet. So this polyurethane or plastic glide ring that's after the main seal. So this is the seal that actually separates positive and negative air. So all your positive air um, pressure is sat in this part of the, the shock. That's the bit that supports your weight. Um, and then you've got negative air chamber that sits between this seal and the outer seal of the air can here. That's the bit that provides um, a, an opposing amount of pressure to the positive air so that it kind of, like a little cushion at the end of a, uh, rebound stroke to make it feel a bit like a, more like a coil shock basically. Um, so that's kind of pretty standard architecture for a, for a air can, um, except for this bit. Now, from what I can see, it looks like it's more simple than I first thought, but let's have a little deeper look into what's going on here. Wait. There we go. So I thought I'd just have a little look under there. So it looks like the new volume spacers, actually to change the big one, you'd actually need to take the damper apart, which is a big difference with, with um, Fox actually. Usually they're slotted like that and they, they slot over, but it looks like this one's actually captive. You seen this volume spacer, Dad? Look, it's captive. Hmm. 
But I guess you can change it because there's, there's, there's a volume inscribed on it. So that one clips on, but this one's oh, yeah. captive. That must have to always stay in there. Then. Yeah. And then so you I just guess get that's just. Ones to flip in. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. That's different. Um, and it looks like that just smashes into this O ring here. So it looks like there's a little O ring in the end. Yes, there is. That, oh no, it's bigger. So it literally just goes up against the surface of the shock then, and that just reduces the volume. Um, so let's just compress it. Or we'll put it on the dyno actually. Put it on the dyno and mash it up and down and we'll actually be able to see what that's doing. So I thought I'd just have a look at the air can as well on the inside. It's all pretty standard stuff. There's some air swap bumps in here, but they're the bumps, bypass bumps, they call them. So they're the bumps or the little indents that allow the positive air to swap into the negative air. And then it's got this hole at the end there that provides this bigger air can with more volume, basically. That increases the volume of the shock. So maybe let's take that air can apart and have a look before we put it on the dyno. Um, look. So I think... It's more like a pneumatic damper. So it doesn't seal. So we've got a resident, resident engineer. You're actually a qualified engineer, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm there's, there's still a gap time. there. Still a gap there. That That's isn't... sealed there. Well, yeah. That's what, I'm tr That's what I'm looking at, trying to figure out what, it, what, it, what it's doing. There we go. So, the, so the solid, all it does, okay, yeah, off. you're right. And that's why this channel's behind there, so it pressurizes it out. Out, so it meets the air can. Who needs instructions? Sorry, I completely gagged in there, haven't I? Yeah, go that's all right, gag out. <laughs> so yeah, it just blocks that port. I thought it just came in contact with the eyelet, but that's not what it does. Um, I was going to check that on the dyno, but I just pushed it with my hand and it's nowhere near the eyelet. So it's even more simple than I thought it was. It literally just blocks that hole at some point in the travel. So towards the last third, I guess. And then you end up with high volume air can at the start of the stroke, which will give you super linear, really like coil like feel. So it's kind of easy to get through the travel, not much resistance, uh, regardless of pressure. Um, and then when you get to the end, the end of the stroke, the size of the air can is reduced by covering that hole. So it just becomes this smaller air can. So actually super, super simple, way more simple than I thought it was going to be. I think I'll just get this air can off this extra volume can. I used to be able to do this with my fingernails. So let's see if I can still do it. Can I still do it? Yes, still got it. <laughs> and then instantly fail. I think it's probably just an air can. There's nothing too special going on. It's just an air can. So just an extra volume air can, which you can actually tune by the looks of things. So there's more volume spaces there. So you can tune the volume of the high volume air can, this, this extra can here. So that's all pretty standard stuff for Fox. So yeah, we can rebuild that. Steve and Will described the bike as ha running loads of sag. So you could run like 35% sag and in the car park, the bike would feel way too low, way too soft. But as soon as you got it out on the trail and actually pushed it into corners and things, it didn't bottom out and didn't go through its travel. Um, and that's ideal because if you, if you are running more sag, the bike is able to deal with bumps better because you've got more available negative travel basically. So the amount the bike sits in its travel, um, so it sits into its travel by 35%, say you've got 35% of the travel movement the opposite direction. So the wheels can drop into holes as well as go over bumps because not all your bump inputs into the bike are up. Some of them are down into holes. So really helps to smooth out the trail, 
But the problem is with that traditionally is your shock would then blow through its travel. So it's actually really, really clever, really, really simple. And I'll just rebuild it and get it on the dyno and then squash it up and down and see what it feels like. But what I thought was gonna be a relatively technical video is actually just a bit of plastic covering some holes. So let's uh, stick it on the dyno. Now this is our hand dyno. Just allows us to kind of check or test shocks that we've serviced. Um, and I'll bung this on here. And it'll just give me an idea, a little, little bit of a feel through the lever of, of what's going on with the shock. So feels, shock feels very supple off the top, um, which is always the sort of goal for manufacturers with air shocks. There's a lot of residual resistance in the seals in a shock. Um, you've actually got to kind of get them past their friction point to actually even actuate the shock. So the Fo Fox have done a lot of work to reduce this with Kashima coating and stuff like that to try and make stuff a little bit smoother, a little bit slicker. Um, but that feels really good off the top. And this isn't, this hasn't got massive leverage on this, on this hand, I know, but let's get it further in. Oh, I can definitely feel it. Yeah. It's there. So it's just before five mil before where the Kashima uh, anodizing logo is, I can really feel it ramp up. Do you want to feel that, Daz? About five mil before the Kashima anodizing, you feel it sort of kick in. There. Do you feel it? Yeah. It's quite far into the stroke, actually. It's, just, it's more supple than what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. it's further into the stroke. That's quite deep. To me, it feels like pneumatic bottom out rather than like ramp yeah it's but not... i guess it's still got volume spaces so you can adjust the wrap the overall ramp of the air spring like a normal like a normal shock it's just got this kind of like there interesting so it's just there that's about where it starts right at the end like there and you can hear it Interesting. So that is the Fox Genie Shock, only available on specialised stump jumpers. There's loads of reading to do. They actually released a white paper for this with lots of testing. Um, it's kind of tried and tested, fully proven. So if you, if you want, we can email you the white paper if you really want to read it. Um, we actually peer reviewed it. Steve's an engineer, so he peer reviewed their paper um, and we didn't get a response. Um, but it's an interesting thing, really, really simple actually in, in practice. Um, but on this particular bike with this leverage, apparently, according to the, the guys that have ridden it, it does make a big difference and it does create a lot of control, a lot of support in the shock. So yeah, nice to pull it apart for you guys. We'll see you soon.